You probably already know you can do this with the star tool, but what about this? Or this? Or these? What's up guys, it's Trent, and in this video we're going to be talking about the star tool in Infinity Designer. Or more accurately, I should say the star tools, since there's three of them. You can actually create a lot of really cool shapes with the star tool that aren't that obvious at first, so let's check it out. Okay, so when I say star tool, what I'm talking about is under the shapes over here on the left, you may have a different icon here. It says star tool for me because I selected that last, but if you don't see it, double click around this area and you will have the options to create different uh, shapes. I, I call them smart shapes because they kind of have certain properties that are unique to themselves. And, and kind of, you know, halfway down here, you see these three star tools. So let's try the first one, the star tool. So I'm gonna click on it and now I can drag the star out here. I'm gonna hold shift to keep the perspective there. So this is kind of our basic star and what you would expect. Now, as with a lot of these shape tools, we have our toolbar up here where we can control it, but we also have these control points down here. But first I wanna look at the, the toolbar up top here. So with the basic star tool, you have this curved edge checkbox, and that's really gonna change the options we can have with this star. I'm gonna start without curved edge first, because that's kind of the more traditional star look that we, we know of. And without curved edge, if I go to my star shape down here, you can see these three control points. If you don't see them, make sure you have the node tool selected. If you don't, you may not see them. So I'm gonna select the node tool, click on it or press A. And when you hover over these control points, you can kind of see what they do. Some have a circle, some have a line. So let's drag these points and see what they do. So this circular one, if I drag it, I can see that this is giving a rounded shape to the, to the point of the star. This one over here is pulling in this internal part of the, the star here. And this one, you can see it's a straight line. It's pulling out that way. Now these three points, they correspond to these three drop-down menus over here. So the inner radius, you can see the one it's affecting. Uh, the outer circle is that top round part. And the inner circle is that one there. And with all stars, we can change the number of points on it here. And you can get some kind of interesting effects based on the number of points you have and these radiuses, or radii, I guess you call them. So you can kind of pull it out this way, generate more points, and you kind of get this badge effect almost is what I would call it. Uh, we can change this here. It's kind of subtle, but if you zoom in, you can see changing the roundedness here. One thing that's interesting about the star without the curved edges is that this radius point can actually kind of, I guess you'd say, you can make it very like bulked up here. So let me bring in the that part. You know, you can make it more floral. This kind of looks like some type of retro flower here if it was like orange. I can pull out the point. And of course, like all shapes, you can apply gradients to it. So if I wanted this to be a sun, I could change the color. Um, not a green sun, but let's have like an orange sun there. Maybe a little bit of yellow. And I can also change the stroke on it, which you do the normal way. You can do it here. You can also control it up here. So if I wanted to do dashed, I can zoom in a little bit and make the borders dashed. Now, as usual, when you do this kind of thing, what happens is when you create a new shape, it's going to remember the style you did last. If you ever want to clear this, just go and just click this button up here to revert defaults. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you just back to your basic shape. So from now on, anything I create is just gonna be like the normal default colors again. So I know sometimes that annoys people when the new thing has the style as the old thing, but just remember this button up here. Okay, so let's look at what the curved edges do. And I'll delete these shapes just for the time being. And let's get back a normal star. I'll give it some color here. And this is the one without the curved edge. So I'll put this on the side and let me copy it. And I'll set this new one to have the curved edge here. Now, as you can see, the control points are in a different space than they were on this one. On this one, without the curved edges, the control points were here. On this one, they're here. So what do they actually do? Well, let's move them. So this is actually giving us a way to curve the side of the star here. And if we want, we can curve the other side too. It snaps to the symmetric position, so you can see it kind of snaps there a little bit to give it a symmetric look, but you don't have to make it symmetric. Of course, you can keep going out. So that's what these kind of two side ones do. And this internal one will kind of do the, the radius there. And as with the normal star, these can all be adjusted up top also, and we can do more points if we want. 
And I kind of like this one a lot. This is also kind of a cool sun if it was orange. So this gives you an example of a shape you could create with this. If you want more ideas for shapes, either for stars or for anything, what you can do is you can click on this gear icon and it will give you the presets for the shape tool. So you can see these different shapes that we can have with stars. So for example, I can click on this one and it'll just create it for me automatically. I can choose other ones here like this and you can see this is kind of a, another star shape that's kind of unusual. If you want, you can also make your own presets. So let me show you how to do that. I'll delete this one. And let's say we have some shape here that we like. We, I don't know, we pull it in. We kind of do this, we have a fat star there. And we want to save this preset. We can just click this little hamburger menu there and just say, create preset. You can say, my cool star. And I can save it. And now if I create another star, I want this to be the star I saved. I can go and I can select it here. And now it's that. So these presets are interesting. They're available for all the tools. Usually the ones that are more simple don't have a lot of options. So for example, if I draw a rectangle, there's a couple options there, not really much. Um, let's see what it does for a circle. I've never actually looked. It doesn't even like have any, I guess. So that tells you how boring a circle is. If I do the cloud tool, Okay, I have some presets for the cloud tool. Again, it's really gonna depend on how many control points you have. When you only have one control point, there's not a lot of options it can create. But when you have more control points, you get more options here to choose from. Okay, so now let's look at the double star tool. And again, we access that similar way to the star tool. It's right under the star tool called double star tool. So I'll click on it. And when you drag it, you kind of notice a little bit of the difference between the double star tool and the star tool. I'll put the star on the side, let's see. So the double star tool kind of alternates the height of the points of the star. So I can change this part here and I can change this. I can make it the same here. This is essentially the same as a normal star or I can pull it down like this. Now it looks pretty basic, but there's actually interesting effects you can get when you play with this. So if you drag these in, drag this out, well, that one's kind of expected, but let, if you go the other way, if you pull this internal one in, you start to get these kind of almost like snowflake shapes in a way. And if we go to the presets, let's see what options we have there. Yeah, you can see there's lots of options with the presets. Things like this are pretty crazy. Like you wouldn't expect this is a shape you could get with a star, but yeah, it's just these two control points that let you do this. Now with the double star tool, from a distance, it looks like things are curved, but they never really are. Like this one kind of looks like it's curved, but actually if you zoom in close to it and look, it's all pointed corners. Let's look at this one here. If you kind of want to get rounded corners with this tool, as far as I know, you have to convert to curves. So if I convert it to curves and then I select the points inside of it, you can play with these settings here to make it round and change how they're affected. So that's basically the double star tool. I think the presets here give you a pretty good idea of like the type of things you can do with it. Surprisingly, you get a lot of different effects with just those two control points there. So let's move on to the next one, which is the square star tool. So I'll create a square star here. And you can see it kind of has this squarish effect and one control point. So as you know, with one control point, not a lot of options we can do. I think the main thing really is just changing the sides and the depths here. One thing to keep in mind is not to confuse this tool with the cog tool. So let me put them next to each other so you can see the slight difference. So the cog tool is down here and I'll move this next to it. Now with the cog tool, I'll get rid of the radius in the middle, the hole in the middle, just so they look similar. Now they both have 12 kind of points, but there's a slight difference. The cog tool has this space in the middle, whereas the square star tool doesn't. So it's just basically chopping off the edges of your points of the star. So just keep that difference in mind. I'll delete the cog tool here. Now something that's funny about this type of shape is it always reminds me of the Red Hot Chili Peppers logo. And I'm not even like the hugest fan of them. I mean, I think they're all right, but like I just, this shape I always associate with them. And I was playing around with it a little bit and I found kind of something interesting I wanted to share, which is that let's look at this logo here. You can see there's a lot of ways we could create it. We could create a plus sign and just rotate it 45 degrees. But let's say we want to create it with this square star tool, which seems like the ideal tool. So there's how many points? There's eight points. So let's get down to eight points. We'll kind of make it similar in size. And I'll choose the same color just to make it cool. Now, what I've noticed when I was just kind of messing around with things is this is, of course, perfectly straight up and down. So I wanted to do the same thing with this, and I thought surely it would just snap there, but 
actually it's kind of hard to get it to snap to that exact position as far as i could tell the best way to get this shape pointing up and down is really to just look at your transform and see well in this position it's minus 15 degrees when i rotate it to the right i overshoot and it's minus 30 degrees so you know the difference between those is 15 degrees so i just decided to see if putting the middle value would work so minus 22.5 and that seems to be the way to get this straight up and down i could do the cutout a little bit more but really as far as i can tell i couldn't see a way to kind of precisely rotate it the way i wanted to other than just like putting in the exact number like i couldn't get it to snap up up and down perfectly and if I convert to curves just for a test, you can see if I look at these points, the Y coordinate is 2.29. The Y coordinate of this one is 2.29. So it is going up and down like that. But that was just something I noticed. So I wanted to mention that in case you're trying to struggle with the same thing. So those are the star tools. I was playing around with them recently and I thought they were a little more detailed than I was expecting. I was kind of getting some cool effects and I thought I'd make a video on it. So perhaps this will help some of your designs add a little flair to them. And maybe there are some of these shapes which you've tried to do before and they were a little complicated. And now with this tool, it'll make them a little easier. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.